Section 61 of The Book of Household Management. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kalinda. The Book of Household Management by Isabella Beaton. Recipes. Chapter 27. Part 3. Cabinet or Chancellor's Pudding. 1256. Ingredients. One and a half ounces of candied peel, four ounces of currants, four dozen sultanas, a few slices of savoy cake, sponge cake, a French roll, four eggs, one pint of milk, grated lemon rind, one quarter of nutmeg, three tablespoonfuls of sugar. Illustration. Cabinet pudding. Mode. Melt some butter to a paste, and with it, well grease the mould or basin in which the pudding is to be boiled, taking care that it is buttered in every part. Cut the peel into thin slices, and place these in a fanciful device at the bottom of the mould, and fill in the spaces between with currants and sultanas. Then add a few slices of sponge cake or French roll. Drop a few drops of melted butter on these, and between each layer sprinkle a few currants. Proceed in this manner until the mould is nearly full, then flavor the milk with nutmeg and grated lemon rind. Add the sugar and stir to this the eggs, which should be well beaten. Beat this mixture for a few minutes, then strain it into the mould, which should be quite full. Tie a piece of buttered paper over it, and let it stand for two hours. Then tie it down with a cloth, put it into boiling water, and let it boil slowly for one hour. In taking it up, let it stand for a minute or two before the cloth is removed. Then quickly turn it out of the mould or basin, and serve with sweet sauce separately. The flavouring of this pudding may be varied by substituting for the lemon rind essence of vanilla or bitter almonds and it may be made much richer by using cream, but this is not at all necessary. Time, one hour. Average cost, one shilling, three pence. Sufficient for five or six persons, seasonable at any time. A plain cabinet or boiled bread and butter pudding. 1257. Ingredients. Two ounces of raisins, a few thin slices of bread and butter, three eggs, one pint of milk, sugar to taste, one quarter nutmeg. Mode. Butter a pudding basin, and line the inside with a layer of raisins that have been previously stoned. Then nearly fill the basin with slices of bread and butter with the crust cut off, and in another basin beat the eggs. Add to them the milk, sugar, and grated nutmeg, mix all well together, and pour the whole on to the bread and butter. Let it stand one half hour, then tie a floured cloth over it. Boil for one hour, and serve with sweet sauce. Care must be taken that the basin is quite full before the cloth is tied over. Time, one hour. Average cost, nine pence. Sufficient for five or six persons. Seasonable at any time. Canary Pudding. 1258. Ingredients. The weight of three eggs in sugar and butter, the weight of two eggs in flour, the rind of one small lemon, three eggs. Melt the butter to a liquid state, but do not allow it to oil. Stir to this the sugar and finely minced lemon peel and gradually dredge in the flour, keeping the mixture well stirred. Whisk the eggs, add these to the pudding, beat all the ingredients until thoroughly blended, and put them into a buttered mold or basin. Boil for two hours, and serve with sweet sauce. Time, two hours. Average cost, nine pence. Sufficient for four or five persons. Seasonable at any time. Baked or boiled carrot pudding. 1259. Ingredients. Half a pound of bread crumbs, four ounces of suet, a quarter pound of stoned raisins, three quarter pounds of carrots, a quarter pound of currants, three ounces of sugar, three eggs, milk, one quarter nutmeg. Mode. Boil the carrots until tender enough to mash to a pulp. Add the remaining ingredients and moisten with sufficient milk to make the pudding of the consistency of thick batter. If to be boiled, put the mixture into a buttered basin, tie it down with a cloth, and boil for two and a half hours. If to be baked, put it into a pie dish and bake for nearly an hour. Turn it out of the dish, strew sifted sugar over it, and serve. Time, two and a half hours to boil, one hour to bake. Average cost, one shilling, two pence. Sufficient for five or six persons. Seasonable from September to March. Carrots, says Liebig, contain the same kind of sugar as the juice of the sugar cane. Royal Coburg Pudding, 1260. Ingredients. One pint of new milk, six ounces of flour, six ounces of sugar, six ounces of butter, six ounces of currants, six eggs, 
brandy, and grated nutmeg to taste. Mode. Mix the flour to a smooth batter with the milk. Add the remaining ingredients gradually, and when well mixed, put it into four basins or molds half full. Bake for three quarters of an hour, turn the puddings out on the dish, and serve with wine sauce. Time, three quarters of an hour. Average cost, one shilling nine pence. Sufficient for seven or eight persons. Seasonable at any time. Cherry Tart, 1261. Ingredients. One and a half pounds of cherries, two small tablespoonfuls of moist sugar, one half pound of short crust, number 1210 or 1211. Mode. Pick the stalks from the cherries, put them with the sugar, into a deep pie dish just capable of holding them, with a small cup placed upside down in the midst of them. Make a short crust with half a pound of flour by either of the recipes 1210 or 1211. Lay a border around the edge of the dish, put on the cover, and ornament the edges. Bake in a brisk oven from one half hour to forty minutes. Strew finely sifted sugar over, and serve hot or cold, although the latter is the more usual mode. It is more economical to make two or three tarts at one time, as the trimmings from one tart answer for lining the edges of the dish for another, and so much paste is not required as when they are made singly. Unless for family use, never make fruit pies in very large dishes. Select them, however, as deep as possible. Time, one half hour to forty minutes. Average cost in full season, eight pence. Sufficient for five or six persons. Seasonable in June, July, and August. Note. A few currants added to the cherries will be found to impart a nice piquant taste to them. Illustration. Cherry. Cherries. According to Lucullus, the cherry tree was known in Asia in the year of Rome 680. Seventy different species of cherries, wild and cultivated, exist, which are distinguishable from each other by the difference of their form, size, and color. The French distill from cherries a liqueur darned Kirschwasser, eau de cerise. The Italians prepare, from a cherry called Marusca, the liquor named Marasca, sweeter and more agreeable than the former. The most wholesome cherries have a tender and delicate skin, those with a hard skin should be very carefully masticated. Sweetmeats, syrups, tarts, entremets, etc., of cherries are universally approved. Cold Pudding, 1262. Ingredients. Four eggs, one pint of milk, sugar to taste, a little grated lemon rind, two ounces of raisins, four tablespoonfuls of marmalade, a few slices of sponge cake. Mode. Sweeten the milk with lump sugar, and add a little grated lemon rind, and stir this to the eggs, which should be well whisked. Line a buttered mould with raisins, stoned and cut in half, spread the slices of cake with the marmalade, and place them in the mould, then pour in the custard, tie the pudding down with a paper and cloth, and boil gently for one hour. When cold, turn it out and serve. Time, one hour. Average cost, one shilling one pence. Sufficient for five or six persons. Seasonable at any time. College Puddings 1263 Ingredients 1 pint of bread crumbs, 6 ounces of finely chopped suet, 1 quarter pound of currants, a few thin slices of candied peel, 3 ounces of sugar, a quarter nutmeg, 3 eggs, 4 tablespoonfuls of brandy. Mode Put the bread crumbs into a basin, add the suet, currants, candied peel, sugar, and nutmeg, grated, and stir these ingredients until they are thoroughly mixed. Beat up the eggs, moisten the pudding with these, and put in the brandy. Beat well for a few minutes, then form the mixture into round balls or egg-shaped pieces. Fry these in hot butter or lard, letting them stew in it until thoroughly done, and turn them two or three times, till of a fine light brown. Drain them on a piece of blotting paper before the fire. Dish and serve with wine sauce. Time, 15 to 20 minutes. Average cost, one shilling. Sufficient for seven or eight puddings. Seasonable at any time. Current Dumplings. 1264. Ingredients. One pound of flour, six ounces of suet, half a pound of currants, rather more than half a pint of water. Mode. Chop the suet finely, mix it with flour, and add the currants, which should be nicely washed, picked, and dried. Mix the whole to a limp paste with the water. If wanted very nice, use milk. Divide it into seven or eight dumplings, tie them in cloths, and boil for one and a quarter hours. They may be boiled without a cloth. 
They should then be made into round balls and dropped into boiling water, and should be moved about at first to prevent them from sticking to the bottom of the saucepan. Serve with a cut lemon, cold butter, and sifted sugar. Time, in a cloth, one and a quarter hour, without, three quarters of an hour. Average cost, nine pence. Sufficient for six or seven persons. Seasonable at any time. Illustration. Zant Currants. Zant Currants. The dried fruit which goes by the name of currants in grocer's shops is not a currant, really, but a small kind of grape, chiefly cultivated in the Morea and the Ionian Islands, Corfu, Zant, etc. Those of Zant are cultivated in an immense plain, under the shelter of mountains, on the shore of the island, where the sun has great power, and brings them to maturity. When gathered and dried by the sun and air, on mats, they are conveyed to magazines, heaped together, and left to cake until ready for shipping. They are then dug out by iron crowbars, trodden into casks, and exported. The fertile vale of Zant the Woody produces about nine million pounds of currants annually. In cakes and puddings this delicious little grape is most extensively used. In fact, we could not make a plum pudding without the currant. Boiled Currant Pudding Plain and Economical 1265. Ingredients 1 pound of flour, 1 half pound of suet, one half pound of currants, milk. Mode. Wash the currants, dry them thoroughly, and pick away any stalks or grit. Chop the suet finely, mix all the ingredients together, and moisten with sufficient milk to make the pudding into a stiff batter. Tie it up in a floured cloth, put it into boiling water, and boil for three and a half hours. Serve with a cut lemon, cold butter, and sifted sugar. Time, three and a half hours. Average cost, ten pence. Sufficient for seven or eight persons. Seasonable at any time. Black or red currant pudding. 1266. Ingredients. One quart of red or black currants measured with the stalks. One quarter pound of moist sugar. Suet crust number 1215 or butter crust number 1213. Mode. Make, with three quarter pounds of flour, either a suet crust or butter crust. The former is usually made. Butter a basin and line it with part of the crust. Put in the currants, which should be stripped from the stalks, and sprinkle the sugar over them. Put the cover of the pudding on, make the edges very secure, that the juice does not escape. Tie it down with a floured cloth, put it into boiling water, and boil from two and a half to three hours. Boiled without a basin, allow one half hour less. We have allowed rather a large proportion of sugar, but we find fruit puddings are so much more juicy and palatable when well sweetened before they are boiled besides being more economical. A few raspberries added to red currant pudding are a very nice addition. About half a pint would be sufficient for the above quantity of fruit. Fruit puddings are very delicious if, when they are turned out of the basin, the crust is browned with a salamander, or put into a very hot oven for a few minutes to color it. This makes it crisp on the surface. Time, two and a half to three hours. Without a basin, two to two and a half hours. Average cost, in full season, eight pence. Sufficient for six or seven persons. Seasonable in June, July, and August. Illustration. Currants. Currants. The utility of currants, red, black, or white, has long been established in domestic economy. The juice of the red species, if boiled with an equal weight of loaf sugar, forms an agreeable substance called currant jelly, much employed in sauces, and very valuable in the cure of sore throats and colds. The French mix it with sugar and water, and thus form an agreeable beverage. The juice of currants is a valuable remedy in obstructions of the bowels, and in febrile complaints it is useful on account of its readily quenching thirst, and for its cooling effect on the stomach. White and flesh-colored currants have, with the exception of the fullness of flavor, in every respect the same qualities as the red species. Both white and red currants are pleasant additions to the dessert, but the black variety is mostly used for culinary and medicinal purposes, especially in the form of jelly for quinces. The leaves of the black currant make a pleasant tea. Red Currant and Raspberry Tart, 1267. Ingredients. One and a half pints of picked currants, half a pint of raspberries, three heaped tablespoonfuls of moist sugar, one half pound of short crust. Mode. Strip the currants from the stalks and put them into a deep pie dish, with a small cup placed in the midst, bottom upwards. Add the raspberries and sugar, place a border of paste around the edge of the dish, cover with crust, Ornament the edges, and bake from one-half to three-quarters of an hour. Strew some sifted sugar over before being sent to table. 
This tart is more generally served cold than hot. Time, one half to three quarter hours. Average cost? Sufficient for five or six persons. Seasonable in June, July, and August. Illustration, raspberry. Raspberries. There are two sorts of raspberries, the red and the white. Both the scent and flavor of this fruit are very refreshing, and the berry itself is exceedingly wholesome, and invaluable to people of a nervous or bilious temperament. We are not aware, however, of its being cultivated with the same amount of care which is bestowed upon some other of the berry tribe, although it is far from improbable that a more careful cultivation would not be repaid by a considerable improvement in the size and flavor of the berry. Neither, as an eating fruit, is it so universally esteemed as the strawberry, with whose lusciousness and peculiarly agreeable flavor it can bear no comparison. In Scotland it is found in large quantities growing wild, and is eagerly sought after, in the woods, by children. Its juice is rich and abundant, and to many extremely agreeable. Baked Custard Pudding 1268. Ingredients 1 and a half pints of milk, the rind of a quarter lemon, a quarter pound of moist sugar, 4 eggs. Mode Put the milk into a saucepan with the sugar and lemon rind, and let this infuse for about four hours, or until the milk is well flavored. Whisk the eggs, yolks, and whites. Pour the milk to them, stirring all the while. Then have ready a pie dish, lined at the edge with paste ready-baked. Strain the custard into the dish, grate a little nutmeg over the top, and bake in a very slow oven for about half an hour, or rather longer. The flavor of this pudding may be varied by substituting bitter almonds for the lemon rind, and it may be very much enriched by using half cream and half milk, and doubling the quantity of eggs. Time. One half to three quarters of an hour. Average cost, nine pence. Sufficient for five or six persons. Seasonable at any time. Note. This pudding is usually served cold with fruit tarts. Boiled Custard Pudding, 1269. Ingredients. One pint of milk, one tablespoonful of flour, four eggs, flavoring to taste. Mode. Flavor the milk by infusing it in a little lemon rind or cinnamon. Whisk the eggs, stir the flour gradually to these, and pour over them the milk, and stir the mixture well. Butter a basin that will exactly hold it. Put in the custard, and tie a floured cloth over. Plunge it into the boiling water, and turn it about for a few minutes, to prevent the flour from settling in one part. Boil it slowly for one half hour, turn it out of the basin, and serve. The pudding may be garnished with red currant jelly, and sweet sauce may be sent to table with it. Time, one half hour. Average cost, seven pence. Sufficient for five or six persons. Seasonable at any time. Damson Tart. 1270. Ingredients. One and a quarter pint of damsons, a quarter pound of moist sugar, half a pound of short or puff crust. Mode. Put the damsons with the sugar between them into a deep pie dish, in the midst of which place a small cup or jar turned upside down. Pile the fruit high in the middle. Line the edges of the dish with short or puff crust, whichever may be preferred. Put on the cover, ornament the edges, and bake from one half to three quarters of an hour in a good oven. If puff crust is used, about ten minutes before the pie is done, take it out of the oven, brush it over with the white of an egg beaten to a froth with the blade of a knife. Strew some sifted sugar over, and a few drops of water, and put the tart back to finish baking. With short crust, a little plain sifted sugar sprinkled over is all that will be required. Time, one half to three quarters of an hour. Average cost, ten pence. Sufficient for five or six persons. Seasonable in September and October. Illustration, damsons. Damsons. Whether for jam, jelly, pie, pudding, water, ice, wine, dried fruit, or preserved, the damson, or damascene, for it was originally brought from Damascus, whence its name, is invaluable. It combines sugary and acid qualities in happy proportions when full ripe. It is a fruit easily cultivated, and if budded nine inches from the ground on vigorous stalks, it will grow several feet high in the first year, and make fine standards the year following. Amongst the list of the best sorts of baking plums, the damson stands first, not only on account of the abundance of its juice, but also on account of its soon softening. Because of the roughness of its flavor, it requires a large quantity of sugar. Damson Pudding, 1271. Ingredients. One and a half pints of damsons, a quarter pound of moist sugar, three quarters of a pound of suet or butter crust. Mode. 
Make a suet crust with three-quarter pounds of flour by recipe number 1215. Line a buttered pudding basin with a portion of it. Fill the basin with the damsons, sweeten them, and put on the lid. Pinch the edges of the crust together, that the juice does not escape. Tie over a floured cloth, put the pudding into boiling water, and boil from two and a half to three hours. Time, two and a half to three hours. Average cost, eight pence. Sufficient for six or seven persons. Seasonable in September and October. Deli Pudding, 1272. Ingredients. Four large apples, a little grated nutmeg, one teaspoonful of minced lemon peel, two large tablespoonfuls of sugar, six ounces of currant, three-quarter pounds of suet crust, number 1215. Mode. Pare, core, and cut the apples into slices. Put them into the saucepan with the nutmeg, lemon peel, and sugar. Stir them over the fire until soft. Then have ready the above proportion of crust. Roll it out thin, spread the apples over the paste, sprinkle over the currants, roll the pudding up, closing the ends properly, tie it in a floured cloth, and boil for two hours. Time, two hours. Average cost, one shilling. Sufficient for five or six persons. Seasonable from August to March. Empress Pudding, 1273. Ingredients. Half a pound of rice, two ounces of butter, three eggs, jam, sufficient milk to soften the rice. Mode. Boil the rice in the milk until very soft, then add the butter, boil it for a few minutes after the latter ingredient is put in, and set it by to cool. Well beat the eggs, stir these in, and line a dish with puff paste. Put over this a layer of rice, and then a thin layer of any kind of jam, then another layer of rice, and proceed in this manner until the dish is full, and bake in a moderate oven for three-quarters of an hour. This pudding may be eaten hot or cold. If the latter, it will be much improved by having a boiled custard poured over it. Time, three-quarters of an hour. Average cost, one shilling. Sufficient for six or seven persons. Seasonable at any time. Exeter pudding. Very rich. 1274. Ingredients. Ten ounces of bread crumbs, four ounces of sago, seven ounces of finely chopped suet, six ounces of moist sugar, the rind of one-half lemon, a quarter pint of rum, seven eggs, four tablespoonfuls of cream, four small sponge cakes, two ounces of ratafias, half a pound of jam. Mode. Put the bread crumbs into a basin with the sago, suet, sugar, minced lemon peel, rum, and four eggs. Stir these ingredients well together, then add three more eggs and the cream, and let the mixture be well beaten. Then butter a mold, strew in a few bread crumbs, and cover the bottom with a layer of ratafias. Then put in a layer of the mixture, then a layer of sliced sponge cake spread thickly with any kind of jam, then add some ratafias, then some of the mixture and sponge cake, and so on until the mold is full, taking care that a layer of the mixture is on top of the pudding. Bake in a good oven from three-quarters of an hour to an hour, and serve with the following sauce. Put three tablespoonfuls of black currant jelly into a stewpan, add two glasses of sherry, and when warm, turn the pudding out of the mold, pour the sauce over it, and serve hot. Time, from one to one and a quarter hours. Average cost, two shillings sixpence. Sufficient for seven or eight persons. Seasonable at any time. Fig Pudding, one. 1275. Ingredients. Two pounds of figs, one pound of suet, half a pound of flour, half a pound of bread crumbs, two eggs, milk. Mode. Cut the figs into small pieces, grate the bread finely, and chop the suet very small. Mix these well together, add the flour, the eggs which should be well beaten, and sufficient milk to form the whole into a stiff paste. Butter a mold or basin, press the pudding into it very closely, tie it down with a cloth, and boil for three hours, or rather longer. Turn it out of the mold, and serve with melted butter, wine sauce, or cream. Time, three hours or longer. Average cost, two shillings. Sufficient for seven or eight persons. Seasonable, suitable for a winter pudding. 2. Staffordshire Recipe 1276. Ingredients 1 pound of figs, 6 ounces of suet, 3 quarter pounds of flour, milk. Mode. Chop the suet finely, mix with it the flour, and make these into a smooth paste with milk. Roll it out to the thickness of about one half inch. Cut the figs in small pieces and strew them over the paste. Roll it up, make the ends secure. Tie the pudding in a cloth, and boil it from one and a half to two hours. Time, one and a half to two hours. Average cost, one shilling, one pence. Sufficient for five or six persons. Seasonable at any time. 
Folkstone Pudding Pies, 1277. Ingredients. One pint of milk, three ounces of ground rice, three ounces of butter, one quarter pound of sugar, flavoring of lemon peel or bay leaf, six eggs, puff paste, currants. Mode. Infuse two laurel or bay leaves, or the rind of half a lemon, in the milk, and when it is well flavored, strain it and add the rice. Boil these for a quarter of an hour, stirring all the time, then take them off the fire, stir in the butter, sugar, and eggs, and let these latter be well beaten before they are added to the other ingredients. When nearly cold, line some patty pans with puff paste, fill with the custard, strew over each a few currants, and bake from twenty to twenty-five minutes in a moderate oven. Time, twenty to twenty-five minutes. Average cost, one shilling one pence. Sufficient to fill a dozen patty pans. Seasonable at any time. Fruit turnovers, suitable for picnics. 1278. Ingredients. Puff paste number 1206. Any kind of fruit, sugar to taste. Mode. Make some puff paste by recipe number 1206, roll it out to the thickness of about a quarter of an inch, and cut it out in pieces of a circular form. Pile the fruit on half of the paste, sprinkle over some sugar, wet the edges, and turn the paste over. Press the edges together, ornament them, and brush the turnovers with the white of an egg. Sprinkle over sifted sugar, and bake on tins in a brisk oven for about twenty minutes. Instead of putting the fruit in raw, it may be boiled down with a little sugar first, and then enclosed in the crust or jam of any kind may be substituted for fresh fruit. Time, 20 minutes. Sufficient. Half a pound of puff paste will make a dozen turnovers. Seasonable at any time. German Pudding, 1279. Ingredients. Two teaspoonfuls of sugar, one teaspoonful of arrowroot, one pint of milk, two ounces of butter, sugar to taste, the rind of half a lemon, four eggs, three tablespoonfuls of brandy. Mode. Boil the milk with the lemon rind until well flavored, then strain it and mix with it the flour, arrowroot, butter, and sugar. Boil these ingredients for a few minutes, keeping them well stirred, then take them off the fire and mix with them the eggs, yolks and whites, beaten separately and added separately. Boil some sugar to candy. Line a mold with this, put in the brandy, then the mixture. Tie down with a cloth and boil for rather more than an hour. When turned out, the brandy and sugar make a nice sauce time, rather more than one hour. Average cost, one shilling. Sufficient for four or five persons. Seasonable at any time. Dampfnudeln, or German puddings. 1280. Ingredients. One pound of flour, one quarter pound of butter, five eggs, two small tablespoonfuls of yeast, two tablespoonfuls of finely pounded sugar, milk, a very little salt. Mode. Put the flour into a basin, make a hole in the center, into which put the yeast, and rather more than a quarter pint of warm milk. Make this into a batter with the middle of the flour, and let the sponge rise in a warm temperature. When sufficiently risen, mix the eggs, butter, sugar, and salt with a little more warm milk, and knead the whole well together with the hands, beating the dough until it is perfectly smooth and it drops from the fingers. Then cover the basin with a cloth, put it in a warm place, and when the dough has nicely risen, Knead it into small balls, butter the bottom of a deep sauté pan, strew over some pounded sugar, and let the dump noodle be laid in, but do not let them touch one another. Then pour over sufficient milk to cover them, put on the lid, and let them rise to twice their original size by the side of the fire. Now place them in the oven for a few minutes to acquire a nice brown color, and serve them on a napkin with custard sauce flavored with vanilla or a compote of any fruit that may be preferred. Time one half to three quarters of an hour for the sponge to rise, ten to fifteen minutes for the puddings to rise, ten minutes to bake them in a brisk oven. Sufficient for ten or twelve damp noodle. Seasonable at any time. Ginger pudding. 1281. Ingredients. Half a pound of flour, a quarter pound of suet, a quarter pound of moist sugar, two large teaspoonfuls of grated ginger. Mode. Shred the suet very fine, mix it with the flour, sugar, and ginger. Stir all well together, butter a basin, and put the mixture in dry. Tie a cloth over, and boil for three hours. Time, three hours. Average cost, sixpence. Sufficient for five or six persons. Seasonable at any time. Golden Pudding, 1282. Ingredients. A quarter pound of bread crumbs, a quarter pound of suet, 
a quarter pound of marmalade, a quarter pound of sugar, four eggs. Mode. Put the bread crumbs into a basin, mix with them the suet, which should be finely minced, the marmalade and the sugar. Stir all these ingredients well together, beat the eggs to a froth, moisten the pudding with these, and when well mixed, put it into a mold or buttered basin. Tie down with a floured cloth and boil for two hours. When turned out, strew a little fine sifted sugar over the top and serve. Time, two hours. Average cost, eleven pence. Sufficient for five or six persons. Seasonable at any time. Note. The mold may be ornamented with stoned raisins arranged in any fanciful pattern before the mixture is poured in, which would add very much to the appearance of the pudding. For a plainer pudding, double the quantities of the bread crumbs, and if the eggs do not moisten it sufficiently, use a little milk. Baked Gooseberry Pudding, 1283 Ingredients Gooseberries, three eggs, one and a half ounces of butter, half a pint of bread crumbs, sugar to taste. Put the gooseberries into a jar, previously cutting off the tops and tails. Place this jar in a boiling water, and let it boil until the gooseberries are soft enough to pulp. Then beat them through a coarse sieve, and to every pint of pulp add three well-whisked eggs, one and a half ounces of butter, half a pint of bread crumbs, and sugar to taste. Beat the mixture well, put a border of puff paste round the edge of a pie dish, put in the pudding, bake for about forty minutes, strew sifted sugar over, and serve. Time, about forty minutes. Average cost, ten pence. Sufficient for four or five persons. Seasonable from May to July. Boiled Gooseberry Pudding, 1284 Ingredients Three-quarter pounds of suet crust number 1215, one and a half pints of green gooseberries, a quarter pound of moist sugar. Mode Line a pudding basin with suet crust number 1215, rolled out to about half an inch in thickness, and with a pair of scissors cut off the tops and tails of the gooseberries. Fill the basin with the fruit, put in the sugar, and cover with the crust. Pinch the edges of the pudding together, tie over it a floured cloth, Put it into boiling water, and boil from two and a half to three hours. Turn it out of the basin, and serve with a jug of cream. Time, two and a half to three hours. Average cost, ten pence. Sufficient for six or seven persons. Seasonable from May to July. Gooseberry Tart. 1285. Ingredients. One and a half pints of gooseberries, half a pound of short crust, number 1211, a quarter pound of moist sugar. Mode. With a pair of scissors, cut off the tops and tails of the gooseberries. Put them into a deep pie dish, pile the fruit high in the center, and put in the sugar. Line the edge of the dish with short crust, put on the cover, and ornament the edges of the tart. Bake in a good oven for about three-quarters of an hour, and before being sent to table, strew over it some fine sifted sugar. A jug of cream or a dish of boiled or baked custards should always accompany this dish. Time, three-quarters of an hour. Average cost, nine pence. Sufficient for five or six persons. Seasonable from May to July. Illustration. Gooseberry. Gooseberries. The red and the white are the two principal varieties of gooseberries. The red are rather the more acid, but when covered with white sugar are most wholesome, because the sugar neutralizes their acidity. Red gooseberries make an excellent jelly, which is light and refreshing, but not very nourishing. It is good for bilious and plethoric persons, and to invalids generally who need light and digestible food. It is a fruit from which many dishes might be made. All sorts of gooseberries are agreeable when stewed, and in this country especially there is no fruit so universally in favor. In Scotland there is scarcely a cottage garden without its gooseberry bush. Several of the species are cultivated with the nicest care. End of section 61 Recording by Kalinda in Raymond, New Hampshire on December 20th, 2007.